Hello friends, I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited that you are here because I'm also excited about our topic today. And I really feel like you're going to glean some amazing uh, keys for life and for leading. Uh, you know, all of us has a call, all of us has a purpose and a destiny to fulfill. And uh, I can think of no better guest than I have today because uh, we are in a very confusing time, culturally speaking. There are so many voices and narratives that are telling women specifically what the definition of being a strong woman is or being a leader is. You know, we hear terms like boss babe, and there are so many title, titles and uh, types of um, conditions that are put on women, both in the church and outside of the church. And so I would really like to unpack this subject today and talk about what it means to lead like a woman. And my guest today is uh, Deborah smith Begay. She is an amazing, dynamic woman. I'm just going to read to you a little bit of her bio so that you know a little of her background. She's a CPA, MBA, former Fortune 500 VP, Bible teacher, and global speaker. She's written 18 transformative, inspirational books including the best-selling award-winning 30 Days to Taming Your Tongue. And she's sold over 2 million books worldwide, and I think that's amazing. She is a frequent guest on many major TV and radio programs. Uh, and she and her husband, Darnell, who's an amazing guy, live in Southern California. And uh, they've been married for 42 years. And her life's motto, I want you to hear this, is, everything works together for my good. I am never a victim. So I want to welcome not just an amazing woman of God and leader and businesswoman, but my dear, dear friend, Deborah smith Begay. Deborah, thank you for being here with me today. Thank you so much, Brenda, for having me. It's always a delight to be with you. You are, you've been an inspiration to me uh, on so many levels and many of those things I may not have ever even shared with you, but I just want you to know you've been a force in my life and Someone who, uh, just by the example that you live and the way that you love, uh, it's been an inspiration. It's been a fire that has caused me to even awaken on some levels and say, you know what, I can do better. And uh, I, can, I can grow character in maybe some of these areas that I've been a little soft. And, and I just want to tell you, thank you. You are uh, just such an inspiring woman to so many women and your book. I want you to tell us about your book, Lead Like a Woman. Well, thank you so much, Brenda. And I have to say that uh, we have a mutual admiration society going here because you have just <laughs> renewed my faith in uh, just people and people, mm -hmm. you, you, your acceptance wow. of me and just really wanting to hear my story. And I, I just want you to know that just meant a lot because I know that you have a pure heart. Well, I want to talk about lead like a woman. I want to just, first of all, define what I mean by leader, because my mentor, John Maxwell says, we're all leaders. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. So we're not just talking about women necessarily in the marketplace today. We're talking about a woman who may be leading her family, a woman who may be leading an auxiliary in church, whatever it is that you're influencing others. And I, when I say lead like a woman, I really mean that. The implication is don't try to lead like a man. As you said, Brenda, there are just many voices in the culture today that talks about how we should be. I don't even like that word, what women should be doing, because mm -hmm. we really have to listen to the voice of God. That might sound trite. That mm -hmm. might sound trite. But I've learned that over the years and this past year in particular. And as, I, wow. and as I have made just various hard decisions for my life where others would say, oh, you shouldn't have left that job. You, you were the first woman or the only woman or the only black or whatever. Listen, I'm not stuck in other people's expectations. And I know we'll unpack that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the fact that you, uh, you speak from your experience. You, you're not just telling us a bunch of words and putting together uh, uh, stories that manipulate people, but you're actually... Your heart is to, you're motivated by love. 
and you're motivated to help people, you have an ability to actually see into the the lives and the bondage that other people might be living in. And, you know, I've called that myself a kind of a hijacked identity where we're not really <laughs> fulfilling uh, what we were placed on the earth to do because we're shut down. And I think we do that. We, we shut down because we're wounded. Uh, we are, uh, we're hurt. We're offended. Uh, I mean, all of the things that, that we carry around that, that extra baggage that just gets to be too heavy will yeah. become a hindrance. Don't you think? Absolutely. And we just kind of like have people pulling our strings. I, I need to be this yeah. over here, that <laughs> over there. And, um, you know, wow. sometimes it's like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I have to tell you at my, at this age, I'm 71.3 years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've learned to just put all of that aside to shut my ears to the, yeah. to the ways of the world. And I can tell you, it's still a challenge. I'm a public mm-hmm. speaker and I don't do half the social media stuff I probably should be doing because I opt to spend mm-hmm. that time sometimes with my husband. I just can't be available for everybody all the right. time. <laughs> so, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with yeah. that because listen, I always say all the days ordained for me were already written in God's book. So I yeah. don't have to make things happen. I'm I'm just really trying to walk out his plan. And that's not right. easy. It, it sounds like real spiritual, but sometimes it's not mm-hmm. so easy to know. What is that plan? Because people are saying, well, you could talk about this. You could be talking about that. And I'm thinking like, Lord, what do you want me to do? And just today, Brenda, I just prayed mm-hmm. with a woman who has two kids, met her at church on Sunday, just felt in my heart just a discerning that she needs somebody to talk to. And I gave her my number and say, listen, if you ever need to pray, call me. Yeah. And she called me and we had just yeah. a wonderful time. She said, you have no idea what that meant or what an impact this had. I said, I do have an idea because the Lord himself told me to do that. Because this week, last week, my cousin, who was 21 years old with two kids, killed herself. Oh, killed herself. Mm. Beautiful mm. girl. Just too Jesus. much. Pressure. We're, we're taking on wow. too much. We're trying wow. to do too much. We're trying to live life in our own strength. Mm. We're trying to keep up this image sometimes. And sometimes mm. you just need to say, I'm going to throw it all on the altar. Lord, show me what to pick up. Mm. Show me where to go. Yeah. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. And, you know, what tragic news. But, you know, I, I really feel like there are so many people who are living right there. They're in fear and they're motivated by fear. So there's just, there's a place where we've got to experience that, that, that par- the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The paradigm shift, yes, uh, so to speak, where suddenly the trajectory is changed. Now you have a story that when I first heard your story, I thought I want to be that woman's friend. She <laughs> has got the real deal. She knows what it is to walk out of old mindsets, old labels, um, rejection, all those things that I too had struggled with on different levels, you know, some of yours were that came to you through uh, racial prejudice, um, economics, different things. But I would love for you to share a little bit of your story for us so that our viewers today can relate to the miracle of what it is to have God at work in your life and how he comes almost, it's as if he comes from our future and he meets us on that horizon where we're in such challenge. We've, we, we might have been going so many uh, directions that were maybe opposite of where we should be going. Yes. And he is the hope on our horizon to be able to visit us in our pain and in our limitations and then begin to rework and rewire us for purpose. You know, oftentimes people see God as just this big disciplinarian, but they yeah. don't understand that it's really about his love and his mercy that's rescuing us out of those things and giving us the keys that are going to unlock those chain, the the locks that are, that are binding us up, right? The chain. Absolutely. So tell me a little about your story and how you were able to overcome your biggest obstacles uh, and and in your leadership journey over uh, what, five decades of experience. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah. I I was born in the South. I don't need to say much more than that. (laughs) It was obvious what my lifestyle and and circumstances were, but I was, I was 14 years old when they passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And, uh, and then we could go and buy hamburgers in front of the the Dairy Queen instead of the the, the back. And, but you know what? I, I learned the word of God early early. Yeah. And uh, I, there's a scripture that talks about the fact that all the days ordained for me were already written. But here's one I really like that really has applied to me. 
Isaiah 14, 27. It says, behold, the Lord has purposed. Who can thwart him? I really yeah. believe nobody can thwart God's purpose for my life. Racism can't thwart God's purpose for my life. Mm. I, he right. has a plan for me. Nobody can, can thwart that. And so that I armed myself with that as I, I was a motel maid. 75 cents an hour. I think I at one point got up to $1.25 an hour, but I went to college and, um, it, you know, even there, I went to one of the most racist colleges you can find. I'm not wow. going to call the name, but, but you know <laughs> what? I've never had a mindset that somebody disadvantaged me. I saw mm -hmm. every challenge is just that. It's just a challenge because mm -hmm. I know that living inside of me is a God who knows everything. He's all powerful mm -hmm. and he's always present. If you really embrace that, you show up differently. So I saw when I had a challenge, I just said, you know what? I'm just, that's just something that's going on. That's going to make me better. That's an invitation to go to another level. And I, I mean, I, I have a lot of joy. I really do. Because I am. I say this, I'm never a victim. Everything right. is working together for my good. And that helped right. me in my leadership journey. And that's why I wrote the book, Lead Like a Woman, because yeah. I believe that God has put in every woman, without regard to race, whatever, God has put in every woman certain female character traits that position us to, to excel wow. in leadership. And one of them, Brenda, is, is just being collaborative. We love to get together. We understand teamwork. We understand that none of us is as smart as all of us. Right. And so sometimes that requires you to step outside of your comfort zone with people who may not be comfortable collaborating with you. Mm -hmm. I, I had a job mm -hmm. once where, um, and I was a, a what do they call that? Um, a hire where when you, when you, uh, you know, they need that kind of a person. I don't, I, whatever it's called, but, um, they, they had to hire a black person for the job. Oh. <laughs> okay. Affirmative action hire. That's what it was called. But right. at any rate, I know that the people were a little skeptical. And so one day um, when they were all going to lunch and nobody invited me, I just smiled and got my purse and say, hey, mm -hmm. you guys mind if I join you? And they said, of course not. You see, they were waiting. So in my head, I make everybody comfortable. I, I, I decided right. it's my responsibility. It's going to advance my ball down the court. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, in some ways, you're a bit of an anomaly. I mean, you have, uh, God gifted you with an amazing personality and amazing perspective, which really, if we back that up, it really came from your choices. These are, these are like micro decisions that we make every moment of every day. And so how does the person who is steeped in the pain of rejection and wearing that like a badge of dishonor, or, uh, you know, the, the scarlet letter, I guess, or the person that just can't get over how it feels to be rejected. Maybe they've got father wounds. Maybe, maybe there are issues from their childhood that tie them to this thing like a stronghold. Can you speak to that person about how they can break that cycle and step outside of themselves long enough to in those moments, what does that look like when you're faced with that decision? Because I'm sure that you had those momentary decisions of, okay, what am I going to do with this right now? Do I be offended? Do I just go on my, go be by myself and, and lick my own wounds, so to speak? Or am I going to step outside of my comfort zone? How do you find the courage? Uh, what's the prayer? What is the mental disposition? What does that look like? For, for me, I know that when I'm feeling that nobody likes me or I, somebody's rejected me, somebody's tried to disadvantage me. And I do say try because <laughs> you can't mm -hmm. disadvantage me. So I, I'll say, listen, you know what? I don't want to get stuck in that kind of thinking. And again, this is where the word of God comes in. I cast down those imaginations. Mm -hmm. You just got to begin to cast mm -hmm. down those because they're rising up against what you know about God. You mm -hmm. know that God has a plan for you. I'm amazed at how often we just get stuck because person A rejected me. I always like to say, sort of joking me, but for real, there are over 7 billion people on the earth. I mean, you really just going to base your whole life on how one or two people Good. treat you. You know, like yeah. let that go. Broaden your perspective, reach out, be proactive, and find some people who will appreciate you. Don't go where you're tolerated, go where you're appreciated. Mm -hmm. That sounds, that rhymes and all that, but it's the truth. So that's yeah. why I have a wide circle of friends. I'm All, all of my friends don't look like me. And, and right. when one group says she thinks she's all that, it's like this group over here is encouraging me. Like you, you've always encouraged me. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to get stuck in that. And so I tell people, listen, when you're feeling rejected and all of that, don't stay there. Yeah, Don't stay right. there. You know, some people are toxic to your, 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 mm -hmm. your existence. And I say, treat those toxic people like I do easy off. 
yeah. when I'm cleaning my stove, I don't stand there and inhale yeah. the fumes. You know, I'll just, if it's a relative, you know, I'll engage for a minute and just go my way. That, that's that's what yeah. I do. Listen, you have to guard your joy and you can't be ignorant right. of Satan's tactics to try to get you to say, woe is me. I'm not joyful. I'm right. not going to try. It's a big world out there. Yeah, it's that's really there. good for all of us. And uh, you know, we're not saying as we're acknowledging uh, the the steps toward um, breakthrough, we're not saying that God doesn't acknowledge your pain or that we shouldn't acknowledge it. We have to go back and revisit those things in order to be able to understand the context of our pain. And so that's why I'm saying sometimes we have to kind of dig deeper and say, this may not be about that person in this moment. It might be about something from my past and what I'm tied to. So you brought something out really relevant there, and that is that we've got to be familiar. If we're going to grow, if we're going to overcome and be, learn to be fruitful in our lives and purposeful, we've got to become familiar with what God's word says about us and how to um, stand on God's word in those moments because our emotions will want to take us a different direction. Isn't that true? Absolutely. Yes, and I like I like what you said about being honest about the pain. I had yeah. a session with my family. I, I lead a Monday night prayer meeting, <laughs> and I, we were talking about depression. And one gentleman, uh, who was my half brother, who said I was depressed because I couldn't hang out with these guys from the Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. or whatever. But what he was really rejected about is that my dad had not had rejected him when he was wow. younger and didn't. But I said mm -hmm. you got to peel that onion so that God, mm -hmm. God says you. In the Psalms 51, it says, God desires truth in the inward parts. You got to be true yeah. to yourself and say, that hurt. This is why it hurt. You know, mm. and, and then yeah. and then visit that, grieve it, grieve the loss. Sometimes you have to grieve the loss of a relationship or just, yeah. the, loss, just the loss of a dream. You know, right. but you acknowledge wow. that and then you say, OK, I'm not going to get stuck in that. But, wow. but you know, I'm going to I'm going to allow the grace of God to take me to that next level. So good. And it's the word of God that, that separates bone from marrow. So the things that are so deep that we can't even do that surgery upon ourselves, God, the Holy Spirit will come and, and do that for us and guide us through that pain where we acknowledge it. And then we're able to kind of pack it up and give it to him and move forward. And so then we're speaking, ready to be the leader. Then we're ready yes, to because we can show people how, to, how it happens. We're mm -hmm. not trying to show perfection here. We're trying to say, I've been through the fire, but I didn't come out smelling like smoke. There's wow. nothing emanating from me that says I've been through the fire, but I have been through the fire. Mm, that's so good. Because, you know, uh, what you're speaking to right now uh, is the, the, the issue that when, when people are, feel powerless, they often their idol is power. And so mm -hmm. when they're given influence or position too soon and they're not ready for it, they don't have the character because they haven't acknowledged that pain. They haven't healed that between them and God. They will become the abuser that, yes. that they were once a victim of. So mm -hmm. it is very important that we process. And that's why oftentimes we feel like, okay, God's holding me back, but he's not holding you back. He is growing you forward. And yeah, I think he's more interested in the process than he yeah. is in the end goal that we are so interested in, don't you? Yeah, and just embrace the process to say, okay, yeah. this is my next level. I've had this past week, I was called names. <laughs> like, how could somebody call me a name? Yeah. I'm so nice. <laughs> wow, yeah, but, that's the you know, truth. <laughs> just because I wanted to address depression and people yeah. were saying, no, people who are depressed are just weak. And I'm like, no, no, mm -hmm. it's like, you, no, mm -hmm. you're, I'm like, no, no, you know? And yeah. listen, that's why we learn to deal yeah. with adversity. And you have, right. we not only need to learn to deal with it, we need to model what it looks yes. like to do. I'm not sure I'm being perfect, that's right. but you need to show people how to go through with the right yeah. attitude. Even if you have to cry later, you have to keep calm and go mm -hmm. through with the right attitude. Yeah. You know, we were talking earlier and you mentioned how that women were on such a uh, beautiful trajectory uh, prior to COVID and, you know, in the marketplace and uh, on so many levels, women were just finding opportunity. And for the first time, really in uh, a long time, in our lifetimes, really that we're, we were seeing women being promoted more. And then suddenly we were hit with this pandemic and social distancing, the cancelization of e large events and uh, churches, church programs, um, you know, we were having to work from home. And so suddenly we're met with this, oh my goodness, 
the thing that that was prospering and doing so well, now I feel like I'm at a standstill or I, I'm at this brick wall. Can you speak to what women, the hope that women can have and how do we take those challenges and then turn them for good? How do we grow through things that feel impossible? Well, I think your key word, you said it, grow. I had to pivot. I'm a speaker. All of my engagements were canceled. I'm like, oh, yeah. no. Not only was yeah. it going to have an economic impact, but like, what else do you do? Let me tell you, I learned technology that I'd even, I had no desire to learn. I learned how to Skype from home. I learned how to, yeah. to set up my lighting and deliver keynote addresses and send them <laughs> to the people. I'm like, oh, I hate this. Yeah. I hate this, you know. But you know yeah. what? That pandemic didn't take God by surprise. That's right. All the days are named for me was still written in his book, even this day. And so mm. I tell women, look for opportunities to grow and get creative. You know, we know a lot of things and people are buying expertise these days. Some of you just know how to get along wow. with people. Some of you know how to have a strong marriage. Listen, don't worry about it. You sit there and you say, God, what are you saying to me? What is my mm -hmm. next move? And listen, and don't be afraid. Just because you haven't done it before, it doesn't mean you can't do it. The biggest way to overcome fear is to do it. I like what Goliath said. He said, if you mm. fight me and kill me, we'll be your servant. In other words, you're going to serve the Good. fear or the fear is going to serve you. So I decided, wow. even if it's outside of my comfort zone, I'm not the one on mm. the spot. My mentor used to mm. say, listen, you're not on the spot. You're just standing in the spot where God's going to mm. use you. When mm. you show up like that, he begins to give you creative ideas. I've developed yes. classes. I'm thinking like, what all do you know? Sit down and do an inventory. What do you bring to the table? What kind of expertise? Mm. What kind of knowledge? What do people call you and ask you questions about the most? And listen, you don't have to be afraid of computers and all of that. Whatever you right. need to know, it is God who gives wisdom to the wise. So you don't, listen, I always say adequacy doesn't good. emanate from you. It flows through you. That's so just good. expect God to show up when you show up. That's good. We've got to show up. And yeah. and that is stepping in, out in faith. You know, that's that place of trust and believing in him to do that good work through in and through us. So I want you in the last few minutes that we have to speak to the um, excellence of confidence. Where does our confidence come from? How do we uh, manage our fears and turn that into confidence? Yes. First of all, we have to know, ladies, that our sufficiency doesn't emanate from us. It flows through us. So I've just made it a habit of learning scriptures that speak to that. Second Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we're sufficient of ourselves to think that anything is from ourselves. Mm. Our adequacy mm. is from God. You are adequate. Women suffer mm -hmm. from lack of confidence. There is no reason for that. Confidence means with trust. <laughs> so we don't mm -hmm. want, you don't need more self-confidence. Abandon that whole concept. You don't need more self-confidence. You have to walk in supreme confidence. You show up mm -hmm. with an expectation that God's going to show up. And so I just believe that every woman out there today, it's time to step outside of your comfort zone because that's where mm -hmm. life really begins and give God an opportunity. Give God an opportunity. His Come eyes on. are just looking. He's just looking. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he's just looking throughout the whole earth. He's mm -hmm. looking at you this today. He's looking for somebody yeah. who says, hey, God, choose me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm willing to let you show yourself strong through me. Whatever it is you've decided to do, write it down, get a due date and go for it. Yeah, so. I love that he is pursuing us and he's looking, like you said, searching the earth for those who are just open and willing and saying, God, I want to know you. I'm inviting you in where I have been broken. I still believe you can take and make all things new in my life. Isn't that the truth? Absolutely. And you got to believe it. And you believe and yeah. you show that you believe it by showing up. I yeah. just can't overemphasize that today. Whatever. Good. And you know, get an accountability partner. Make yourself accountable mm -hmm. to somebody. So say, hey, Good. help me. And stay away from those people who project their lack of faith onto you. You do what right. God is telling you to do. Lead like right. a woman. Lead yeah. like a woman. <laughs> so good. Tell us a funny story about yourself. I mean, one of those maybe intersections where you had a decision to make or you felt insecure and you had to take and turn that thing around. Do you have, a, do you have anything? Uh, you're just so full of wit and humor. I, I'm <laughs> calling on something that you weren't prepared for. But Oh, that's okay, because uh, I, I yeah. do have a quick funny story. <laughs> okay. I, I, I had to make a, a presentation once, and the men would almost never let me go to these meetings, but I was the one who mm. put the deals together. And I decided this deal was so complicated, they said, yeah, you have to go to the meeting. I was so 
full of pride about being the one who had the most knowledge mm -hmm. in the meeting. So when I got ready to go, I had on this white silk suit. I threw my briefcase in the back and I thought I did. And when I backed up, Brenda, I rolled over the briefcase. I got out, tried to get oh. all my papers back together. Black stuff got all over my suit. I was so oh, humiliated. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, so what I learned is reminding us: <laughs> don't walk in pride. Don't walk in pride. Yeah, walk in faith. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that's that's truly really good. I, you know, I I look at people on social media who get these. They gain these little platforms and followers, and and it's so funny. You can kind of see where there's sometimes a shift, and the minute that we, our tendency as human beings is the minute that we start feeling like, okay, I'm I'm actually. Uh, uh, garnering a following, I'm, I'm being influential, is our pride wants to step in and say, "You did, look what you did. Yes, and yes. We're taking mind. credit for God's work. <laughs> yes. And and so that's really the, the opportunity where the enemy wants to come in and take control over the gift God gave us. And so I am thankful, just like you, for those kinds of moments where God reminds me, listen, you need me. And this yeah. is about my glory flowing through you, my beauty in you. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter who shuts a door. It doesn't matter who rejects me, or who tells me that I don't have a right or I'm not good enough. I know yeah. my God and I know the thumbprint of his DNA in my life and identity and what he's brought me out of. And so with that, I'm compelled to want to help other women do the same. That's why I love you so much. It's why I <laughs> feel so this sisterhood with you and so drawn to you. And I'm just so appreciative for all that you've, e you have even poured into my life. And, uh, you know, I just feel like we also are dealing with, um, some of the issues, uh, and the conflicts between men and women, even though we want to say in our culture that those don't exist anymore, they really are on the table. And I mean, we've seen just within the last few years where uh, yeah. high profile people have actually been brought down for sexual harassment, for yeah. saying things they shouldn't have said. And, you know, and then we have a lot of hypocrisy where some people have not been held accountable for some of the things they they have said. We see this in Hollywood. We see it in politics. We see it in the church. We are watching the systems of man unravel before yes. our eyes. And, and it was so that, sad yeah. that a lot of the women felt like they had to succumb to these advances just to make it. As a woman yeah. of faith and Christian women, we don't have to succumb to that. We can maintain our standard. God is yeah. our way maker. Amen. Amen. So it really points back to who is your God? Where do you find identity? Uh, what is your ambition based on? What's your motivation? Are you in your ego or are you in the spirit of the Lord? Are you fulfilling as a uh, in the in the model of Christ, uh, as an ambassador of Christ, what God has placed you on this earth to do? And, you know, I don't mean to sound over spiritual. Some people like to say, well, I don't want to sound Sunday school. But, you know, what is life without God in it? I mean, Absolutely. tell me that. Yeah. We, 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 I think that we've got to approach every single thing that we do through the filter of knowing that God is a part of everything that I do. And I'm going to allow him to check me and check my motives. Would yes. you agree with that? Absolutely. And, you know, it's uh, without him, we can do nothing. Yeah. Just, we just Amen. need to remember that apart from him, even the things we think we're good at, we're not good at anything. Yeah. We just have the grace of God excelling in certain areas of our lives. Yeah. And so we just need to remember that. And that's why yeah. we don't have to tolerate anxiety. You know, we don't have to anticipate mm -hmm. a negative outcome. We can walk in peace and the world will wonder, why are you so much at peace? And you can mm -hmm. tell them why. You yeah. can tell them the source of your confidence, yes. you the source of your strength, the source of yeah. your peace. Yeah. So how do we heal the divide and the 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 wreckage, the carnage that's behind us between uh, genders, between races, between religions, uh, politically? How can we be the spark, each one of us, to uh, you know light our lamps and begin to lead? Isn't that really what it's about? Whether you're in the marketplace or in the church, to begin to lead like the woman God created you to be. And, and facilitate healing to a world that's hurting so badly. Can you speak into that? And would you minister to uh, some of the brokenness uh, that people are dealing with today? Yes. First of all, we got to learn how to listen. Let's learn mm -hmm. how to listen objectively. Wow. Leave our prejudices alone. 
D mm -hmm. put, put down your broad brush. All yeah. people aren't this way. All women aren't this way. All blacks aren't this way. All whites aren't this way. Mm -hmm. All men aren't this certain way. Mm -hmm. We just got to learn how to listen. And then look yeah. with the eyes of God. Look beyond sometimes the behavior and see what is the real need. And then and have the courage to speak against it in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a way that's God honoring. And sometimes that means you're just going to pray. You're going to pray mm -hmm. for favor because you're already surrounded with it like a shield. You're just going to pray for that. And so, and you know what? When I see people that I know have been known to be prejudiced, I, I want to talk to them. I want to I want to interview them. I want to show them that I'm different and that may, that may change their mind about the brush good. they've used to paint everybody else. And I'm not going to yeah. hate. I'm going to take the, a higher road than hate. I'm just mm. going to believe that. And when I work with mm. men, I'm going to, I know that men like to be appreciated. I give them what they need. And listen, they'll fall all over themselves trying to help you. I will ask somebody, may I pick your brain? I admire what you've done. I've gotten so many great mentors just doing that. And so I just want to pray for women right now. Can I just do a quick prayer? Yes. For Please, God, please. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every woman who is listening. Lord, those who felt like they have been held back. God, yeah. those who feel like maybe their career is off track, help them to know, Lord, that they're just where you want them to be because they're at Thank the you. point where they need you. And so I pray that every woman who is listening to my voice, God, will surrender their ambitions to you today. And God, let you show us what you would have us to do. You have work for us to do. And we don't want to mm. be found not doing your work, God, because we know that that mm. causes anxiety and burnout. But today we say, what would you have us to do? And then we say yes to your will and your way for the season. Mm -hmm. Help us to know we can have it all, but not in the all in the same season. And the all yes. that we want is what we you have for us. We want yes. all that you have. That's the all that we want. Mm -hmm. All that you want us to do. And we thank you, God, for clarity, clarity of thank purpose, you, Lord. clarity of decision in Jesus name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. And amen. amen. Wow, I love you so much, my sister, my friend. Uh, it's such an honor to lock arms with you. And I'm excited. I'm excited oh, about what I'm God's excited. doing through women, through women like you and those who join with us. Listen, I want people to be able to uh, get in touch with you. So tell them how they can find you and how they can find your book. Okay, confrontingissues.com is my website, confrontingissues with an S.com, or just Google my name. The book is found wherever books are sold, or you can go to my website if you want an autographed copy, or you can go to Amazon.com. There's lots awesome. of good information, empowering information on the website. Yes, yes, there is. So go to Deborah's website and uh, link up with her. And also, you can come to brendacrouch.com. I want to encourage you as well. We are working together for the kingdom. That We're not in competition. We are all a part of God's big plan, his bigger plan. And there's a bigger picture than many of us have had our eyes on. So we just want to encourage you today. Deborah, I love you. I thank you so much for the honor that you would come and be on my program today. You've taken time out of your amazing schedule. And we got to do this again. Can Thank we? you, Brenda, that you're using your platform for the glory of God. I just pray blessings Thank upon you. the platform. Mm, thank you. Appreciate you. Well, thank you, folks, for joining with us. I hope you, I know that you were blessed because I know that there's a wellspring of life and uh, words of life and spirit that come from this amazing powerhouse woman. And uh, so I want to invite you to join us again next time and be sure that you connect with Deborah and get her book, Lead Like a Woman. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Brenda Crouch.